We're at the Salzburg Ring in Austria, and we're here to test a pre-production version of the new BMW M5. Any M5, or any introduction of an M5, is a special occasion, and this one promises to live up to that too. It's a big change, and you'll be able to read all about that on the website, of course, and actually, the same time as this video is dropping, the pictures of the fully revealed car are also being shown. However, before that, we've got to drive it here on track, and delve a bit more into the technical detail, talk to the engineers about it, and while showing you it here is probably irrelevant, a probably a good point to introduce the car. The big change is it is now a plug-in hybrid. It retains a V8 engine, 4.4 litre, twin turbocharged, but now it gets a big electric motor, so that produces nearly 200 horsepower on its own, and a big battery that enables nearly 70 kilometers of electric driving, which is quite incredible considering this is an M5, it's still an M5. People who care about that side of it, of course, will want to know all about performance. And this car produces up to 727 horsepower and 1,000 newton meters of torque. I think that lives up to the M mystique, if nothing else does. You probably can't see it here in the disguise, so pop along to the website to have a look at the fi finished car, but the highlights, it's wider. The tracks front and rear are wider, and hence the bodywork is too. 75 millimeters wider up front. You probably can't see it, but the larger air intakes here, of course, to feed that big, powerful engine. We've got quad exhausts at the back, wider track at the rear as well, and of course, a little rear spoiler. You know, before we get going, I should probably mention what's under the bonnet. It's stuck with the V8. In fact, BMW M went out to the markets and asked, could they get away with a smaller engine to offset the weight, perhaps, of the new plug-in hybrid powertrain? But no, the markets very much wanted a V8, and I'm glad they did listen to that. <laughs> so it's a 4.4 litre twin turbocharged as before, but now it's got the backup of a big electric motor. So this is a plug-in hybrid. Many plug-in hybrids sound as good as that, do they? So peak power when the motor and the engine are working flat out, 727 horsepower. But actually the figure that is probably worth taking more notice of is the peak torque. That's 1,000 newton meters. And that's just ridiculous. On the back straight here, and you're pulling 250, 260 kilometers an hour without even thinking about it. It's just got incredible pull. Behind an M4 CS, we have a pace car, and this is actually faster on this straight. And yet, bizarrely, this will do nearly 70 kilometers on <laughs> electric power. It's just such a bonkers dichotomy. Of course, Adding that plug-in hybrid was a big challenge for the M engineers. Why? Because that's nearly 500 kilograms of weight, and that's the really bad news. So the chassis engineers certainly had their work cut out. But yet, here we are in a racetrack, big, nearly two and a half ton saloon, and it is chucking it around. Here's the hairpin, or here's the chicane. No bother to it. A lot of grip, and a lot of fun. Let's hear it down the straight. Oh, sounds like a proper M car, doesn't it? Got a lot of performance. A key thing, I mean, we're, we're used to things like adaptive damping and the active M um, rear differential, but new for the M5, probably to help with disguising some of the extra weight, is the integral active steering. That's rear wheel steering in BMW speak. And what that means is it's more agile at lower speeds and more stable at higher speeds. BMW, however, doesn't go too far with that. It just puts a, a degree, a degree and a half, I think it is, at maximum, um, at lower speeds, actually. And at higher speeds, it goes less than a degree in the same direction as front wheels. The idea being that, you know, it, it feels more linear. It feels, the car feels more sincere, more consistent in its response. But even that's enough to disguise the extra weight, I guess. The brakes are bigger as well, which I'm glad of here on track today. And yeah, it just feels like an M car as you'd hope an M car is. 
key to all of that, and it's always been key to the M cars, or has been for a long time, is the configurability of the driving systems. And you press the setup button down here, and you get this menu up in front of you on the big touch screen, and you can adjust everything. So I'm looking at it here. So the drivetrain is Comfort Sports and Sport Plus. New is Energy Recovery. You have min, mid, and max. So that's an interesting one. I always prefer actually minimum for brake energy regeneration, but it seems to be quite subtle in this car. Certainly on tracks, probably a bit different down the road. And what else have we got? Drive Logic. So that's for the transmission. You can choose how extreme you want it to be. Then the chassis, which is a damping. Steering between Comfort and Sport. I always prefer Comfort myself. And actually the brakes. So. You know he has an integral brake booster system and you can choose comfort and sport and actually there's quite a big difference between the two on track in this car. Anyway, that's our first taste of it on track and it lives up to the billing. It's a pure M5 and it's definitely an M car. Well, that was good fun. <laughs> Not a bad introduction at all to the M5. As I said in my piece there, it drives just like an M5. The extra weight, it do, you don't really feel it, certainly not on this track today. It bodes well for our full drive on the road later in the year. We're really looking forward to that. Anyway, if you want to know more, pop along to the website. You'll get a lot more details on the car and fully undisguised shots of it as well. It's completecar.ie and it's a great resource for checking out your next new car.